Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this Bible study tonight. A time of divine impartation. And I'm asking, Lord, to touch every life in Jesus' name. I pray that the study of today will make a difference in every life. For all our students, for all the faculties, and for all the members of staff, and for all the professors, and the consultants, and everyone, the, as the associates. Lord, we ask, today will be a turning around in every life in Jesus' name. All our deeper life members and leaders in this place, and all over this city, Lagos, and all over Nigeria, and outside Nigeria, receiving this study tonight, I pray that it will make a difference in every life. You break every yoke, destroy the works of the devil, and let us discover the purpose why we're here on earth. And lift up Jesus in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I want to tell you uh, before we actually go into the study. We've been having our Bible study in Deeper Life Bible Church. We started with Deeper Christian Life Ministry from 1973. We started in August, August 3rd, precisely. And since that time, we've been studying the Bible systematically. And uh, we've always had it in Lagos here and all over the nation. And any, anywhere you find a deeper life Bible church, on Monday, we gather together to study the Bible. It so happens that today we're starting a new book of the Bible. We just finished Jude last uh, Monday. And now we come to Revelation. And today we're in Revelation chapter 1, and we're looking at verses 1, 2, and 3. Just uh, for you to understand, when we say Bible, there may be some of us here, you understand, Bible is a holy book, and we call it the Holy Bible. But why do we actually read the Bible, study the Bible? Real serious, because Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving us here you are on earth and god has given us basic instruction and he says i put you here i created you i put you here so that you'll accomplish a particular purpose and you know what this basic instruction you go through you read you learn you study and then if you're going to meet me you'll see the contents there and you'll see what i preserve for you i want you to know that before you come over and i pray that this basic instruction before leaving the earth you'll get the gist of it a bit of it today and the lord will turn your life around now the word study you might uh, discover that uh, as we approach the study of the bible today why not it's different from preaching you see there are people that preach you have a lot of preachers but when we say Bible study, we actually come to study and we have a purpose. You know, when I was uh, still uh, teaching and later I became a lecturer at the University of Lagos, I did mathematics and taught mathematics, we always have our content, what we're teaching. And then we have a goal, we say, at the end of this lecture, at the end of this lesson, that very day, that's what I want to achieve. I have, I have to have all that in my mind. And the students too, if you understand why they're there, you understand we're studying this today so as to have this at the end of the class. And then at the end of the semester, I know what I want to achieve. I have the curriculum and I need to go through that. And when I come to study the Bible, I approach it that way. And I'm going to spell it out for you because you, if you as a person that is studying, you must understand the person that taught me did he actually study the Bible with me and myself teaching the word of God? I need to find out, did I teach? And did I have Bible study? When we say study, yes, that means search the scriptures. In fact, that's what Jesus commanded. He said, search the scriptures because in them you have life, eternal life. And because it gives you eternal life, search the scriptures. 
and I come with well, the Sunday. I look at the Bible. I say, look at the Bible I'm studying today, and then I search. I search. I search the scriptures. And then I come to tear there. It is tear down the strongholds. You see in our lives, there are strongholds. You want to move here, you can't move. You want to go there, you can't go there. There is a kind of stumbling block, a stronghold that is preventing you from reaching. And the Lord placed me here so that I can achieve a purpose. And there is a stronghold before me. When I come to study the Bible, the tea there is that I am the tea there is I'm tearing down the stronghold. And today, as we come to study the Bible, pay attention, every stronghold in your life will be teared down. Because as you study that stumbling block that you cannot achieve, I'm telling you, you become an achiever today. S, S, tell me S there. Search the scriptures, tell me T. Tear down the strongholds. You see, when I come to study the Bible, I, you now is to uphold the standard. Uphold the standard. The standard for life. The standard for your person. The standard for your family. The standard for your conduct. The standard for your character. The standard by the creator that he gave us. And he said, that is the blueprint. That is the standard. And when I come to study the Bible, I want to remind myself of that standard again. And I want to lift up. I want to uphold the standard. Now, the D there is to discover the supernatural. You see, when you come to study the Bible, it's not like you're still in the human plane. You're still at the natural level. It is, if you come to study the Bible and you couldn't do what you couldn't do before, that is, after studying the Bible, you're still the same person, as weak as ever, as ignorant as ever, as fearful as ever, as timid as ever, and as uh, kind of uh, backward looking as ever. No, you've not studied the Bible. When you study the Bible, you discover the supernatural and what natural things and powers and personalities could not do in your life. Today, it will be done. Because we search the scriptures, we tear down the strongholds, we uphold the standard, we discover the supernatural. Now, after the teaching, after the study, you have something to do and to see your hand. If you're going to receive the benefit of the study, this why now is for you. You yield to the Savior. Yield to the Savior. Actually, everything, that's why John said, I'm writing this to you so that you will know that Jesus Christ is the Savior and that knowing him, you will believe on him and believe in him, something wonderful will happen in your life. And so I invite you to the Bible study today. This is the basic instruction before you leave the earth. And it is blessed information bringing life eternal. And because it is this blessed information and it brings life eternal, we search today. Will you search with me? We're going to tear down the stronghold. The strongholds in your life are turned down today in Jesus' name. And we're going to uphold the standard. We're going to discover the supernatural. And we'll come to the end of the study. As we yield to the Lord, He'll remold your life. Give me a good amen. It will refashion your life. You'll never be the same again. This single study. In the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to mean a lot in your life. What you couldn't do before, you'll begin to do. The places you couldn't go, you'll begin to go there. And the dreams and the vision you didn't have. Here is the place where God will carve out a new vision. And then you're going to climb every mountain in your life in Jesus' name. We're now coming to the real study today, and we're coming to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Today we're studying verses 1, 2, and 3. Open your Bible if you have. If you don't have your Bible, just I'll read to you. It says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto the, his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto the servant John, who bear witness of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that is so. He said, Blessed is he that readeth 
and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand the time is at hand as we look at the first line there it says the revelation of jesus christ is telling you what's going to happen in all the chapters of this last book of the bible it says it's not a covering up it's not a hiding away it's not a mystery it's something that is opened up unveiled discovered and it calls it revelation and you find the very first word there the revelation then revelation about who is revelation of jesus in the original language is revelation about jesus the revelation concerning jesus the revelation coming from jesus the revelation that he reveals unto us he gives unto us here then is something important here then is something essential here then is something indispensable here then is something prophetic here then is something practical it gives us revelation and it's about jesus christ and you see john had spent three and a half years with the lord jesus christ he knew jesus in at the human level he comes now to know jesus christ at the supernatural level and you will see as you study the bible as you study this revelation his attitude his reaction his response when he saw jesus christ revealed in this new way he fell before him because he was now seeing somebody having the glory and the majesty and the power and the personality that he didn't see when he was here in the gospels you read matthew you see his life on earth you read mark you see his life on earth you're reading luke and john you see the life of jesus christ on the earth you come to revelation the revelation and then you see jesus from another perspective here the light of glory is shining here there's no pharisee to hinder him here there's nothing to block his glory and you see the majesty that's why it says they come to the revelation most people don't reach this book of revelation because they don't understand and they can't get what is there even some believers they read the opening chapters they read the closing chapters and then the middle chapters they totally ignore because they think they cannot understand and they are thinking that thing is hidden that thing is a mystery that thing is covered up there's no way you can understand but the opening the opening key here says it is a revelation it's not something we shy from shy away from it is not something we think as a closed book a veiled book a mystery it is a revelation it is the revelation that shows who jesus christ is you're going to discover his power his authority you're going to discover his glory and his majesty you're going to discover what he can do here is revealed the glory of christ here you have revealed the majesty of christ here you have revealed the power of jesus christ you have his might you have his plan you have his program you have his dominion revealed over here you have his victory and then it brings you into the picture you have your future here it's in book of revelation and you have the destiny of every man here there is a blessedness in reading look at verse 3 here it says blessed is he that readeth even to come around and to stay around and to read this it says there's a kind of blessedness that comes upon you and i want to tell you you are blessed today as you look at these words as you hear these words you are blessed in jesus name look at that verse 3 he knows there are people that do not not have a copy of the bible in fact in those days very few, few, few people could afford to have a copy of the bible blessed is he only one singular that readeth and look at the, the next part of that verse and they that hear you see there is he that readeth that is the one reading and then the one who is hearing they that hear the words of the prophecy and then the people that keep those things which are reaching therein for the time is at hand we then come and we read we come and we hear we come and we learn we come and we live in anticipation of the fulfillment of this revelation and let's come to the study now you look at verse 1 and it says the revelation of jesus christ what's that is the content 
is talking about the content and then we talk about the comprehension my point number one the comprehension of the revelation here is revelation you understand that's what philip was asking the eunuch for utopia do you understand what you are reading and then we need comprehension point number one the comprehension of the revelation i come to point number two now that's in verse two and it is a communication of the revelation how was it communicated how did it come from god to jesus to the angel to john to his servants to the church and then to you today the communication of his revelation and then number three now is the commendation of the revelation the lord is commending this revelation to us and he says read it it says study it it says learn it it says get the nutrients of the real matter and let it be part of your life it recommends it to us we call that the commendation of the revelation and it says blessed is he who reads and blessed are they who hear and the people that keep and obey and follow after what they have read i'm coming to number one number one tell me point number one there is the comprehension the comprehension of the revelation i come to revelation chapter one and i'm reading from verse one verse one it says the revelation of jesus christ stop right there as we go through the um, through the epistle through this uh, revelation uh, that were given there are many things we're going to see there you're going to see some numbers that you see three as a number you see seven as a number and you see 42 as a number you see a lot of symbols here it's not revelation about numbers you know and then you're going to see some uh, kind of imagery you're going to see some bees you're going to see some animals that are mentioned there it is not revelation about animals and you're going to see some kinds of things say what is this and what is this always understand this is the revelation of jesus christ it's showing you the face of jesus it's showing you the understanding of who jesus is it's showing you the power the glory the exaltation of Jesus Christ this is the revelation of Jesus can I show you look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I had behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega that's revelation beginning now is beginning to reveal to us the alpha and the omega it's revealing jesus you must understand that he said this is the revelation of jesus and without wasting time in chapter one it begins that revelation alpha that's the very first alphabet uh, the first letter of the greek al alphabet and the omega that's the last uh, letter of the greek alphabet because uh, the new testament was written in greek why is he talking about that he's saying is the first and it's the last and that if you want to write any good thing you use the letters of the alphabet and if you want to write the story of a good life i'm talking about your life the story of a successful life i'm talking about your life and the story of a powerful irresistible life that you will see at the end of life i am an achiever come to this book and come to jesus is the alpha and is the omega is the beginning as the end is the foundation and is the final power in your life that will make you who you ought to be and i can tell you it's going to happen from today and then it goes on in verse 11 it says and the first and the last the first if you wake up in the morning and then you have jesus the first in your life and then in the evening you end up jesus your life and then at the beginning of life remember your creator in the days of your youth if you begin with jesus christ and then you move on and on is the first and then is the last and you have not abandoned him in the middle of the way and when you are going to close your eyes on earth you say jesus my savior and then you pass on you'll meet him on the other side it is my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you for the people that make him the first and the last and then he goes on to say in this place that's in verse 11 here it says what thou seest right in a book and then he goes on i'm looking at verse 12 and he says and i turned i want revelation now and i turned you know if you hear these words you don't even pay attention the people that have this change and this transformation are the people that hear and they turn the people that see and they turn 
I've never had that before. I've never seen that before. I'm seeing that for the first time. I must wait. I must turn. I must turn around so that I can see what is being revealed to me. That was the advantage of John. And that was the prophet of John. Because he had the voice and then he's, he's not going to see. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw. Being touched, I saw. You understand? It's the revelation. And I saw. And that's what you're going to find all through the book of Revelation. I saw this. I saw this. I saw this. He saw into the realm of the supernatural. And then he now tells us what he saw. Uh, look at uh, verse 13. In the midst of the a golden of the seven candlesticks and like at the son of man clothed with a garment down to the feet and then he goes to the foot and then he says and guards with paths with a golden girdle and he said and his ears were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were like a flame of fire he is looking at the glory of christ you know when christ was here on earth in his humiliation you know people they pushed him they rubbed shoulders with him somebody will touch him and that will happen but now this is glory this is exaltation he said i heard the voice it was like the voice of a thunder and then i turned around and i saw the one speaking to me and i saw his majesty you'll see his majesty you see his glory and when you see his glory everything shameful will pass away from your life and that is the point of seeing jesus christ in any way and seeing his exaltation i come to chapter three the revelation of jesus christ and here is the lord now revealing himself he says unto the angel of the church in philadelphia right these things uh, says he that is holy that's jesus and he that is true that's jesus and he that has the key of david he that openeth and uh, no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth is revealing jesus just remember now the revelation of jesus christ who is jesus is that unique personality from heaven that has the key the key of destiny and the key of dominion and the key of power and it says i open the door and no man on earth can shut that door when you belong to jesus a door will open before you and when he opens that door no demon can close that door and no satan can close that door no witch or wizard can close that door you know there are people they say i want to go there i cannot go there because they trouble me i see opportunities i cannot seize the opportunity because somebody is hindering me when you come to jesus he has a final say and he has the key in his hand that's why he says john go tell them and reveal to them if they want to be victorious without possibility of any resistance he said i'm he that has the key the destiny of your life the victory in your life i have the key i open and no one can shut that door and i shut and no one can open i'm looking at chapter five chapter five because we're looking at the revelation of jesus christ chapter five i'm reading from verse five it says in verse five and one of the elders said unto me weep not behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof and what had happened is that john was taken spiritually to heaven and then there was a book to be opened the book of redemption and the book that contains the freedom of the whole earth that this earth will be totally released from all the bondage and everything that we have now and uh, but the book was sealed nobody could open that book and then john began to weep why because the secret of our liberty the secret of our dominion the secret of a good destiny was contained in that book and the plan of god and the program of god contained in that book but it was sealed and no one could open that book even moses that had gone to heaven could not come and open the book and even elijah could not open the book and david as great as he was could not come to open the book and paul could not come to open the book because they had all gone to heaven and then john began to weep what's the hope for the world 
if the redeemer is not able to come if what contains the book for victory is not opened what's going to be our lord our destiny and then one of the angels came and said john don't worry somebody has prevailed and I want to tell you in your life, if your life is all sealed up, if your life is all closed up, it's all clumsy, what am I going to do? And then you just hang your head in the corner of your room and you say, I'm looking at my life. It's, it's like a closed book, you know. And it's like something is tied down. And I don't doubt I'm, I'm going, to, going to get out of this. And I come to tell you, don't worry. Because somebody has prevailed. And that thing that is closed up in your life is appearing to you. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. And when he comes, he'll break every yoke. He'll destroy the works of the devil. Look at this in that verse 5. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion, the king of the forest. And because he's the king of the forest, he's saying the one that has all power. The one that has all authority. The one that is irresistible. He says, he has come. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David. He has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seals, the seven seals thereof is the revelation of jesus christ and then look at what happens now in verse 10 and he has made us unto our god kings and priests look at that he's going to make you a king and a priest that means he lifts you from the prison to the palace he will raise you up he will lift you up if you discover jesus and then you yield yourself to jesus remember the study we we'll search. Remember the study. We we'll tear down. Remember the study. We we'll pull the standard. Remember the study that we are discovering the supernatural. Remember, you yield to the Savior. At that point of yielding, your life will turn around. That's why it says He has made us to be. He has made us to our God, kings and priests. And then He says, We shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. I thought somebody there will say amen. amen and he says and behold and i heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the, and the number of them ten thousand and ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb they're giving glory to jesus christ behold the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world it says what is the lamb that was slain and then it says to receive power and and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth such as are in the sea and all that are in them had i saying blessing and and the honor and glory and power is uh, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb tell me the rest forever and ever john was seeing something he never saw you know he had seen jesus christ it's like just one of us it's like a servant he saw him when he put the water into the bowl and began to wash the feet of all of them he saw him when he carried the cross he saw him when he fell down under the weight of the cross he saw him when he was praying at gethsemane and was sweating the sweat of blood he saw him when he cried at the graveside of lazarus human just like one of us now he's seen him this is majesty he's seen him now this is glory he's seen him now this is another revelation of jesus christ maybe sometimes you've studied about jesus christ you've learned about jesus christ you can describe this and this and this but it never made any impact in your life because it's like you know he's the son of man but now you're seeing the son of god you're seeing the lion of the tribe of judah you see the one that will break every yoke in every life you see the one that will remove every mountain in your life you see somebody today that will turn your life around and this is your day i said this is your day a new vision a new understanding a new goal a new dream a new vision and a new power coming upon your life today in jesus name 
I'm looking at I'm looking at chapter 7 chapter 7 I'm looking at verse 17 it says in chapter 7 verse 17 it says for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne is not in the valley somewhere now it's not in the hand of the Pharisees now it's not in the hands of crucify him crucify him all that is over the time of glory for Christ has now come and the time of his majesty and dominion has now come and that's why it says and the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into the living fountains of waters look at this and God shall wipe away and God shall wipe away tell me and God shall wipe away tell me all tears from their eyes the time is coming what revelation here and that's why it's important as you come to this book of revelation and it says it is the revelation of jesus christ what you have never heard about jesus what you have never known about jesus practical things wonderful things what you will do in your life the wonder walker is coming in your life with a new kind of power in your kind of purpose you'll never be the same again we're looking at revelation chapter 10 revelation chapter 10 i'm reading from verse i'm reading from verse 1 it says and i saw you know if it's revelation you'll see something you'll see something john saw something i must see something you know if you come to a time of revelation and you didn't see anything and then you come in and then you go back the same way and i said what did you see today what did you learn today did you get something today a vision of christ revealed to you today did you see and you say well i didn't see what you were talking about i'm not sure you were there if you are here your mind is here your heart is here your brain is there and your heart is here you say i will see the lord today I said I will see the Lord today. You will see him in his glory. And something definite will happen in your life in Jesus' name. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven. Closed with a cloud. And a rainbow upon his head. And his face was like was as if it had been the sun. And his feet as pillars of fire. And then he said, and he had in his hand a little book open and he set his right uh, his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth you know what you think of the earth a uh, part of it is water and part of it is a solid earth and then it says that this one has authority on the sea has authority of the land so that anywhere you are you're on this side of dry ground he has authority or you go on you're on the sea he has authority he set one foot on the earth and one foot on the sea and he cried with a loud voice and then he says as when a lion roareth and when he had cried seven thunders uh, enter, uh, uttered their voices it's talking about the power and the majesty of look at verse 7 in verse 7 here and it says in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of god shall be finished shall be finished finalized whatever has been a mystery in your life as we go through the book of revelation finality is coming fulfillment is coming you see christ comes in and everything that had been there before he came in all those things if they are negative he'll sweep them away he will grant you the victory and he'll make you more than a conqueror because he now comes in and he comes in with power and majesty i'm coming to chapter uh, chapter 11 verse 15 we're talking about jesus jesus revealed jesus revealed unveiled to us we're looking at revelation chapter 11 verse 15 and it says and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our lord that time is coming and that's why john is preparing the minds of the people he said sometimes we who are christians who are following jesus christ and then there's a persecution and then sometimes you are minimized that your right is not giving to you and you are wondering because i'm a christian look at what is happening to me is this how life will continue uh -uh. a change is coming 
a turning around is coming those of you who are down now your time is coming when christ comes up you will rise up and then it says the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign tell me there forever and ever that's why john was so excited and so happy when he saw the new glory of jesus christ when he saw the new power of jesus christ when he saw this revelation concerning the lord jesus christ he said a lot is coming wonderful things are coming and coming because of christ and you'll be partakers of that in jesus name i'm reading here now from chapter 16 and verse 15 chapter 16 from verse 15 it tells us here it says behold i come as a thief that means i'm coming suddenly that means i'm coming unannounced that means i'm coming when many people in the world are asleep they are asleep spiritually and it's like uh, you know they don't know what is going on around them but it says behold i come suddenly as a thief but then it says blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and this sea is shame i pray you'll be ready i said you'll be ready we're looking at chapter 17 and verse 14 chapter 17 and verse 14 here he tells us in that verse 14 it says uh, they shall make war with the lamb remember lamb with the capital l that's referring to jesus christ and the lamb jesus christ the lamb of, of the tribe of judah shall overcome them and for he is lord of lords and king of kings lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful you see all these verses were reading they're revealing jesus christ various aspects and the areas of the dominion of jesus christ this is the full revelation of the person of christ of the power of christ of the program of jesus christ is revealed to us as the alpha and the omega is revealed to us as the first and the last is revealed to us as the redeemer and the savior is revealed to us as the conqueror and as well the overcomer in this the book of revelation is revealed as the lamb is revealed as the lion is revealed as the glorious king is revealed as a gracious comforter the one that wipes our tears away is the center of history is the culmination of history is the hero of destiny and the, the victory even to the final end this is the reigning christ of glory the king of kings and the lord of lords is the bridegroom of the church behold the bridegroom cometh is the lamb and the light of the eternal temple i want you to look at this in uh, chapter 22 there are lots of other verses but uh, just to look at this chapter 22 i'm reading to you from verse 16 chapter 22 verse 16 it says i jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches it says i'm giving you this revelation and i'm giving you this knowledge and i jesus your lord and master have sent my angel to reveal this unto you then it says i am the root and the offspring of david then it says and the bright and the morning star and i is telling us you're going to get the benefit of all this in verse 17 and the spirit and the bright say come that is you see all this the majesty of christ the glory of christ the power of christ and then you see the plan of christ and that he can make you what you ought to be he can take weakness out of your life and bring strength into your life it can take defeat out of your life and bring victory and triumph into your life and it says now you must make up your mind and you must do something about that and the spirit and the bright say come and let him that hear us say come and let him that is a thirst come and uh, whosoever will whosoever will somebody there wants it tonight wants the blessing tonight whosoever will i'm looking for somebody there you want blessing tonight and you want the riches and the glory of christ tonight your light will shine and your life will move up in jesus name 
the one that has the key of heaven and hell and has the key of destiny is here tonight he will use that key and open the door before you and he says whosoever will let him come and take the water of life freely it's mine i said it is mine it will come to you in jesus name we're coming into revelation chapter one revelation chapter one i've looked at that first part of verse one because it says it is the revelation of jesus christ i come to point number two now point number two is the communication of the revelation the communication of the revelation how did this revelation get to us because it's taking some years now since john received it look at it Look at verse 1 again. It says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. The communication. How was this received? Number one, it was with God. And God gave each unto Jesus. And then it says, To show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant john let's look at the line of communication it was in the heart of god in the plan of god in the program of god in the destiny of humanity it was just totally in control under control from god and now he gave it to jesus christ his beloved his son our savior our lord and then after it got to jesus he sent it through an angel it came to the angel and then from the angel it came to john john the beloved and from john the beloved unto his servants and then unto the church and then unto us today now it is yours now it's in your hand you'll make good use of it this thing will bless your life this will turn your life around the communication of the revelation and how, how did how that was it received that is how did john eventually get this and how did he get to you if you look at uh, those two verses there look, look at verse two who bear record of the words of god and of the testimony of jesus christ and of all the things that he saw number one it was showed to him to show and to signify you find those words there and then i saw and then he saw that number two of all the things that he saw all the things that he saw which means all those details about christ all the areas of the life of christ of the majesty of christ of the glory of christ he said i saw that of the things which he saw and then of the voice that he heard there were times he had this in the voice coming from heaven and then there are things that surely must come to pass and look at this i'm coming back to verse one look at this verse one now the revelation of jesus christ which god gave unto him to show unto his servants look at that what show it was showed to him i'm looking at chapter four verse one chapter four verse one after this i looked and beheld and behold a door was open in heaven and the first voice which i heard was as it were of a trumpet to talk in with me which said come up hither and i will tell me the next word there i will show i will show thee the things which must be here raptor i will show thee it was shown unto him i'm looking at uh, chapter 21 chapter 21 of revelation i was looking at verse 9 chapter 21 and reading from verse 9 and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying come hither and i will tell me show thee the bride the lamb's wife it was shown to him and you find that word over and over actually many times in the book of revelation i saw it because he showed it unto me i'm looking at chapter 22 verse 6 chapter 22 verse 6 and he said unto me these are the same these saints are faithful and true and the lord 
God of the holy of the holy prophets sent his angels to show unto his servants to show and so you find in many passages of revelation that is not just theoretical this is not something that somebody just thought out this is not the figment of somebody's imagination he showed me and then I saw that there's another word here and it says of all the things which he saw then let's come back to revelation chapter 1 Revelation chapter 1 of the things which he saw. It says this one is real. This one is definite. And this one is concrete. This is the true thing that I'm revealing to you because I saw that of all the things which I saw. Revelation chapter 1 verse 17. It says, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. It says, there's nothing to fear when you know the first and the last. And I want to tell you tonight, there's nothing to fear. On land, on the sea, there's nothing to fear. In the night, in the day, there is nothing to fear. On your street, in the community, there is nothing to fear. In this institution, in this community, this area of Lagos, there is nothing to fear. When the Lord is with you and the power of the Lord is with you, you are with him, is with you. And he says, I'm going to go with you till the end of the world. And he says, fear not, I am the first, nobody before me. I'm the last, no one after me. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I live forevermore. And then the church said, Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death death wonderful that jesus christ has promised to be with us he will never leave you and he will never forsake you and he says the things which i saw you know he also saw the judgment that was coming look at revelation chapter chapter 20 revelation chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 11 because he's saying i'm a faithful writer a faithful author a faithful recorder i've recorded of all the things which i saw he saw the glory of christ he also saw christ as a judge the judge the final judge of all the earth look at chapter 20 verse 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on each and from whose uh, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no more place for them and i saw and i saw it's always telling us this not imagination i saw there's no theory I saw. This what they said, no, I saw. This not what they told me, I saw. He said, you can take this for real. In verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were reaching in the books according to, the, to their words. And then he says, the, the sea gave up, and the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death look at verse 15 and whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire john said i saw them i saw them i saw them they looked at the book the book of life every time when you give your life to jesus christ and your sins are forgiven when you give your life to jesus christ it becomes your savior it becomes your lord your name is reaching down in the register of god in the book of life for the people that says why i go to church i think that's enough I was baptized as an infant i think that's enough i take the holy communion i think that's enough i give money to the beggars you know i think that's enough my mind is like this i'm, I'm a plain man i'm a plain woman i'm a nice person everybody knows i'm a nice person and therefore i don't have to write my name there you know what there are many intelligent people who are not in this institution their name is not in our record although they're intelligent but they're not their name is not there there's some people they 
they have a great IQ. Their IQ might be kind of higher than the IQ of many of us here, but their name is not in the book. It's not in our book. It's not in the register. There are people that are in locally, do you understand? There are people that are inventors. Naturally, they just, they can invent this and put this together, but don't mind, their name is not in our record. And whatever they can do outside the people whose names and the record is unfortunate for them. There's no recognition for them. The same thing spiritually. You might be a nice person, a good person, whatever it is you're doing, but your name is not in the book of life. Maybe you're even better than some of the people that have their names there. When we eventually get up yonder, and then you say, I'm sure how to get to heaven. If so and so gets to heaven, I must be there. If that woman, if she gets to heaven, I'm telling you, I'm better than her. Even she knows that I'm more well behaved than herself. If he gets to heaven, I must be there. My friend, you know the difference? Her name is in the book of life. She got Jesus as her savior, as her redeemer. And the almighty God wrote the name down. And Jesus told his own disciples, said, don't rejoice because you are able to subdue the powers of the devil, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I'm looking at Gamaliel. I'm sorry for Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a teacher of Saul. Gamaliel, all those things that Saul knew from all the Leviticus, the Deuteronomy, and all those intricate laws, Gamaliel taught Saul of Tarsus, who became converted, and his name was in the book of life. That's Paul. But Gamaliel, the teacher, I'm sorry for him. His name was not in the book. And then when they eventually get to heaven, get to the other side, and then Gamaliel sees Saul, he says, my student, how are you? He says, I'm fine. You remember what I told you? Yes, I remember. And then they opened the book. They said, that's Saul. Who changed to Paul? Come in. And then confidently, Gamaliel will come and say, here am I. That man at going in now, I mean, he's a teacher, I'm his tutor. I taught him everything you know, before the road to Damascus. And then they look at the book. They can't find his name. And he said, I'm this, I'm this, I'm that. He said, it's not on the basis of what you are by yourself. But the people who come through Jesus Christ and then their lives have been turned around. Their lives have been transformed. And they saw him in the book in Revelation. He was revealed to them and they received him. And then they said, sorry. Then Gamaliel goes to the other side, but I'm going to get to heaven somebody there i said i'm going to get to heaven and you know very simple i see jesus is revealed to me now is my savior and it's my lord i see him on the cross he died for me father my father my god my god why have you forsaken me that's the time he bore the load of my sin and then i surrender i yield myself to christ i say take me i'm your servant now take me i will follow you now all my sins are forgiven. My name is in the book of life. And then as I'm going through life, I remember one thing. Not because of my good works. Could my tears forever flow. Could my zeal no respite no. All these for sin cannot atone. Thou and thou alone must save. I hold on to Jesus Christ. I said he's my savior, my lord, my master and my king. And then as I'm closing my eyes here, I say, Lord Jesus, love of my soul, receive my soul. I get to the other side my name has gone ahead before me and once i get there they recognize me they see my name in the book they all shall me in you might be better than i am you might be greater than i am you might know more things than i know you might be more religious than i am but if your name is not there i pity you but your name will get in there tonight is another night that, that's all we sang come believing come believing come to jesus look and live once again the gospel message is coming to you and we're telling you that jesus died for us on the cross of calvary and whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved thank god salvation is available tonight and whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire as you look at this i'm coming back now 
now to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. And I see what John was saying. Look at this. Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ verse 1. Which God gave unto him. And he says unto show unto him. Unto his servants. The things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it. By the hand of the angel. By his angel. Unto the servant John. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things that he saw. Before I leave this point number two, this communication, I want to tell you something about the communication. Number one, the communication is personal. Personal. Number two, the communication is prophetic. This communication is prophetic. Number three, the communication is preparatory. Preparatory. Look at it. Number one, the communication is personal. Look at chapter two, verse seven. Chapter two, verse seven. He that has ear to hear, let him hear. Personal. Personal is coming to you. This revelation of Jesus, this exaltation of Jesus, this title of Jesus, this power of Jesus, this majesty of Jesus is coming to you in this new way. And then he says, personal now, personal now is not what is he thinking about it? What is she thinking about it? What do the other people think about it? Don't wait for other people. Be a man of your mind, a woman of your mind and say i understand that i get that jesus is exalted is going to be my savior that's why it's personal he that has an ear to hear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches to him personal to him that overcometh will i grant will i give to each of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god it's not only personal it is prophetic it is prophetic look at chapter 1 verse 19 chapter 1 verse 19 write the things which thou was seen past tense and the things which are present tense and the things which shall be hereafter in the future the things which shall be hereafter the communication is prophetic not only that now, the communication is preparatory. The reason why we're giving all this revelation about Jesus Christ is to prepare us for the coming of the Lord. That's why it says in chapter 1 verse 3, look at this. Chapter 1 verse 3, blessed is he that readeth. Prepare yourself and read. And they that hear, prepare yourself and hear the words of this prophecy. And the people that keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand it's saying because it will soon be fulfilled that's why i saying get ready get ready and be prepared the revelation in the communication is preparatory we're looking at chapter 19 chapter 19 i'm reading from verse 7 chapter 19 verse 7 it says let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and the wife has made herself ready reading all this you make yourself ready learning all this you make yourself ready hearing all this you make yourself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. I told you point number one is the revelation, is the, uh, is the comprehension of the revelation. Number two is the um, communication of the revelation. The final point, now tell me point number three, is the commendation of the revelation. Look at the commendation. What the Lord is commending to us, what the Lord is recommending to us, and it says this is what to do. The revelation is now in our hands, it's printed in the book, it's there on your iPhone, it's there on your iPad, it's there in very many areas of uh, you know the gadgets we have. And now we're to do something about that. This recommendation it tells us in chapter one, verse three, it says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of the of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand you're going to have some verb, you're going to find some verbs here blessed you see that readers the word reach that's a verb that's a word of action. It says, do something about this. Don't just say, I have a Bible. Are you reading the Bible? 
I know where the book of Revelation is. It's revealed unto us. Have you read it? And it says, the people who are going to be blessed are not the people that have, they have three Bibles at home. They have uh, ten kinds of Bibles at home. They have the NIV. They have the normal English version. They have King James version. They have standard version. They have everything. But they never read. They never read. It's not just to possess. It's not just to have. You know, somebody gave me a Bible and it's there on my shelf. Blessed you see that readers. You must read. It is the reading that brings the blessing unto us. And then it says, and they that hear. You know, somebody says, when I want to really hear preaching, I know where to go. When I want to hear something to stir me up and to challenge me and to drive me and to give me some motivation and to tell me what Jesus can do, I know where to go and hear that word that will empower me and energize me. But you go there. You go there. Blessed are they that hear. Number one, blessed is he that readeth. It's not just, you know, sitting at home and closing the Bible but you read then it says blessed are they that hear and now it says blessed are they that keep they keep those things which are reaching therein it's one thing to read it's one thing to hear and I say to keep that word and the blessedness comes to the people that are reading and hearing and keeping and obeying and following and living according to what they are reading I'll be a person like that I said I'll be a person like that. I will read. I said I will read. Somebody there tell me out loud, I will read. I will hear. And I will keep. You know, don't, don't, don't say verbs in our lives. Verbs in our lives. I'm telling you, you see there are people, they don't understand the importance of verbs. Action words. The thing that drives you into action. To do something. You know, if you are just uh, there and you are, you know, relaxed and you are not reading, you are not keeping, you are not hearing, you are not going to get the best out of life. But you know, today is a day of change. Am I talking to somebody up there? Today is a day of transformation. Thank God you are here. Something good is going to happen to you. Uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking at Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. In Luke chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 23. Luke chapter 7. And we're looking at verse 23. Look at this. It says, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me blessed is he that is as you read about jesus christ you don't allow your preconceived idea as you hear about jesus christ you don't allow tradition as you read about jesus christ you don't allow historical events as you read about jesus christ you don't allow anything at all to block your view it says blessed you see that uh, whosoever he is that will not be offended in me not only really that now to uh, to hear to read uh, let's look at uh, let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 34 Isaiah chapter 34 and I'm reading here from verse 16 Isaiah chapter 34 are you there I said are you there yet Isaiah chapter 34 and we're looking at verse 16 it says seek ye out of the book look at that seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read that's a command that's an imperative. It says, this is what you do. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. It says, none shall watch homage. And it goes on to say, for my mouth it has commanded and, he, and the spirit it has gathered them. You see what it tells us? It says, you are blessed when you read. And then it says, we are to hear. We are to hear. But you must uh, see how you're here. Uh, look at Luke chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 8 verse 18. Uh, here it says, Take heed how ye hear. Take heed how ye hear. What does that mean? Some people read and forget. Take heed how ye hear. Some people read and they don't understand. Take heed how you read. Some people read and they don't turn it over. They do not personalize it. They do not internalize it. They read it as, okay, they read the Bible as they read the newspapers. They read the Bible as they read, uh, you know, whatever it is. They just read and then if you ask them, uh, 
What did you read today? I've forgotten, but I know I read the Bible. What's the decision you have taken after you read the Bible? I read it in ticket. Am I supposed to take a decision? What are you getting at? And what do you where are you going after you read the Bible? And what are you going to do as a matter of principle, as a matter of determination that will make your life a better life because of what you read? I didn't know that I was to take any decision or make my life better. I just read. That's what Jesus said. Take heed how ye read. As you read and hear today, something better will happen in your life. And then you will keep that word you are hearing. Look at Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 28. Luke chapter 11. We're looking at verse 28. It says in verse 28, But it said, Rather, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and tell me, keep it. They hear the word of God and keep it. They hear the word of God that says, you must be born again. They keep it. They get born again. And they hear the word of God that says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And they keep that. They hear the word of God that says, Take Jesus as your Savior. And you see, yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. They hear the word of God and keep it. The blessing of God will come upon you in Jesus' name. And now finally it says, For the time is at hand. For the time is it's a time. You know, sometimes when you have a date that is set, this is going to have, for example, the Bible study of today. You've heard the announcement. It's going to take place uh, August uh, 15, uh, 2016. And it was like far away. And it's, I'll make it, I'll make it. And, and there are some people that heard about it. The Bible study taking place specially here today. And then it was like, it's still about three weeks to come. It's still about uh, two weeks now. And see about one week. And then we said, Will you be there? Of course, I'll be there. Count on me. I'll be there. All of a sudden, now the day has come. And here we are. And I look around. Where's that person? I'll be there. I'll be there. And you know, they're not here. That's how the time of the coming of the Lord will be. It's, it's, it's far away. And the Lord is saying, the time is at hand. It will come. And you are going to be ready. I know I'm going to be ready. I don't know about you, but I know I'm going to be ready. I said, I know I'm going to be ready when Christ shall come. That time, we think, is far away. It's far away. The time is nearer than your thoughts. If you look at what is happening in the, in the things of the world, the economy of the world, you know that the time is very near. And the Lord is saying, get ready. The one thing you must do, your name must be in the book of life. And check up your name. Your name can enter the book of life today. I'm looking finally now at uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And here is what the Lord is telling us finally. He's telling us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. It says, saying, uh, Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse uh, 42. Verse 42. Let's read together. It says in verse 42, watch therefore. It says, watch therefore. It says, you watch your thoughts and you watch your habit of procrastination. I'll do it later. My name will enter later. Oh, I'm going to serve the Lord, you know. But it's not now. I'm going to. He said, watch, watch. That habit of procrastination. That habit of delaying the things that is so essential and so indispensable and so necessary. Watch it therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Look at verse 44. It says, therefore, be ye also ready. Thank God I'm going to be ready. I said, I will be ready. Therefore, be ye also ready for at such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. We've gone through the study today, but remember, how did we study? S we search, we searched the scriptures. Search the scriptures. T we tear down. The strongholds every stronghold in our lives as christ comes in in his majesty and his power everything that is powerless everything there's nothing that can compete with jesus christ i open the doors of my heart and allow jesus to come in every stronghold in your life will be turned down 
you tear down the strongholds. That's why we study. And then we uphold the standard. And we lift up Jesus Christ as our standard, our Savior, our Shepherd. There's nobody like him. And as you look at him, look unto me and be you saved all the ends of the earth. And then the deed there will discover the supernatural. And the supernatural will come in your life today. And then why I yield to the Savior. I yield to the Savior. He's presented to you today. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the Master of the whole creation. He's the victor. He's the great overcomer. And He comes into your life and you're going to be an overcomer. Am I talking to somebody there today? You'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. And those of us outside there, I cannot see you there outside. Are you still there outside? Wonderful. Let Jesus see your hand. Overcomer there, victor there. You're more than a conqueror. Where is your hand? Raise up that hand. Wonderful. I see you outside there by faith. And I know you'll be an overcomer in Jesus' name. And inside here, I join hands with you to make you an overcomer. I joined my faith with just to be an overcomer. But you know, but you know, but you know, uh, whatever I know now, did you hear when they introduced me, they said I'm this, I'm this, I'm that, but my name is not in the register of, uh, you know, the College of Medicine here. And no matter, I may jump up and run up and down until my name gets there. I cannot have, you know, your certificate here. And then there's another book, a greater book, a greater register. And it's a book of life in heaven. And tonight is the night for your name to enter there. What's your name? Tell me your name. I said, tell me your name. The angel will write that name. Once you say, I see Jesus Christ is revealed to me. And because Jesus is revealed to me, I take him as my savior. He will never leave me and I will never leave him. He'll take all my sins away. The guilt of my sin, the condemnation of my sin. Christ is revealed unto me and I take him. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I give you the opportunity now and you're saying Jesus is mine today. Jesus is mine today. Jesus is mine today. I give my heart to Jesus and I want my name to enter into the book of life. He'll grant me victory. He will grant me success it will turn my life around and it's going to demolish it's going to tear down every stronghold in my life the power of christ will seize your life today and then he'll take you up and he'll take you to a place you never thought you could get to something new is going to happen to you and if you're there you want him to be your savior and you want him to take your sins away where wherever you are you raise up your hand you say lord i'm here where are you there lord i am here raise up that hand. Lord, I am here. Raise up that hand. Lord, I am here. Outside, the, the Lord is waiting for and looking for you. And inside, the Lord is looking for you as well. Lord, I am here. I want to be a child of God. I want all my sins to be forgiven. I want this revelation of Jesus Christ to make an impact in my life. Raise up that hand. Wonderful. Raise up that hand. That, that's good. That's good. That's good. If you're raising up the hand, you'll stand up. You're not being embarrassed. I just want you to get yourself out of the crowd and say yes lord here i am yes lord here i am yes lord here i am i want my name in the book of life you'll confess your sins to christ say lord i'm sorry for this i'm sorry for this i'm sorry for that but now i want you to forgive me i want you to change my life i want you to turn my life around Christ is revealed to you today. He's your savior. He died for you. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. You just say, Lord, I yield myself to the savior. I yield myself to the savior. That's the purpose of the study. That's the purpose of the study. We search the scriptures and then we tear down the strongholds. We uphold the standard and then we discover the supernatural. Finally now, we also yield to the savior. You you raise up your hand outside outside the lord can see you there outside where are you you raise up your hand you stand up and i can't tell us you get there right now and then you are inside you just stand up and say lord i surrender my life unto you give my life unto you turn my life around even today it will happen right now happen right now happen right now uh, our counselors are nearby there they'll give you a sheet of paper but we're praying at this time now I raise up your hand as you are standing up. I'm going to pray with your father in the name of Jesus. 
I thank you because of the revelation of Jesus Christ today as our Savior, as our Lord, as our Master. And you have revealed to us that if we're going to enjoy all the glory, the majesty, the dominion, the reigning that we'll see of Jesus Christ, if we're going to be with you, our name must be in the book of life. We must turn away from our sin. We must hold you and accept you as Lord and Savior. All these people have accepted you in their heart. And they say today, I surrender myself over again unto Christ. I pray, come into their heart. Reign in their lives. Rule in their lives. Be their Savior, O Lord. And I pray, Lord, their names will be in the book of life. On that glorious day when the dead in Christ shall rise, and then we which are alive will be raised up together to be with them as the saints go marching in. Everyone that have surrendered their lives unto you, Lord, I pray, will go marching in with them. Or reign with Christ will enjoy heaven forever and ever. Confirm it in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Uh, well, the counselors will give you some sheets of paper. They, you know, just uh, want some information there. Keep on standing until you finish uh, doing that. And then after that, now we're going to tear down the strongholds. Somebody there said, We're going to tear down the strongholds. You know, whatever has hindered you from moving forward i'm moving forward i said i'm moving forward say it with the voice of a victor the voice of a conqueror nothing will stop you because we came to study and you can see did we search the scriptures tell me now and now the next thing the tea there What's the tea there? Whose stronghold are we tearing down? Your stronghold will tear it down. And then we'll pull the standard. You will meet up with that standard. Am I talking to somebody today? And we'll discover the supernatural. All those natural, natural things disturbing your life and blocking your way, threatening your life. And then you're almost, uh, almost sitting there and say, if a pastor, I cannot make it. Look up. Don't look down. You will make it. Yeah. What are you there? I said you will make it. Yeah. You will discover the supernatural. And then every area of your life, you yield to the Savior. You yield to the Shepherd. Because the Lord from now on is my Shepherd. And I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And He leads me by the path of righteousness. And I'm telling you that even though the enemies may be there, I will fear no evil. In the night, you will not fear. In the day, you will not fear. In the exam hall, you will not fear. When it comes to time to, you know, dissect or whatever, you will not fear. Because he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He sets the table before, tell me now, before me. And then he anoints my head. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. How long? I said, How long? Demons will not follow me. Say it for yourself. Satan will not follow me. A curse will not follow me. All those magicians, wherever they are, they will not follow me. Surely. Surely. Somebody there, surely. Somebody there, surely. There are two personalities following me everywhere I go. Two personalities. You know their names? Tell me their names. I look back, they're always there. I'm following. I'm going. Where are you? Stand up now.
goodness and mercy will follow you. In this, our locality, goodness and mercy will follow you. All those powers of darkness will tear down the strongholds today. All the mysterious sicknesses will tear down all those strongholds today. A new day has come for you. Raise up that hand and receive. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every brother, every sister, every man, every woman, every one of us here today, and the people who are inside and outside. Lord, I pray this will be a new day. The day of revelation and the day of tearing down every stronghold and every power of darkness that has hindered you until this day i command come out in jesus name every mysterious sickness every mysterious curse every mysterious evil i command you get out in jesus name i pray lord from today there'll be a change there'll be a transformation failure is gone defeat is gone sicknesses are gone infirmity gone all that cause coming from any direction all the threats coming from any direction i subdue them under your feet i tear down every stronghold in your life in jesus name you will arise and shine you will arise and succeed and your success nobody will take away from you from this day you'll discover the supernatural and the supernatural power of god will hold you up for the rest of your life from this day demons will not follow you satan will not follow you evil powers will not follow you and all the enemies of progress will not follow you from this day goodness and mercy turn to the right goodness and mercy turn to the left goodness and mercy you are in the class goodness and mercy you are the market goodness and mercy you are in the office goodness and mercy anywhere you are goodness and mercy will follow you not only when you're studying when you come out goodness and mercy will follow you and when you're walking goodness and mercy will follow you when you get married goodness and mercy will follow you as you have children goodness and mercy will follow you you will never lack all your needs god will supply and then when the time comes to get to the other side to go to heaven your name remains in the book of life I'll see you on the other side. I'll see you in heaven. Because your names are written there. Between now and that time, the joy of the Lord will multiply in your life. The goodness of the Lord will multiply in your life. Every day, a day of miracle. The supernatural will never cease in your life. Lord, confirm it in every life. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.